hello beautiful people welcome back to our channel as uh, several nigerians at some point or the other have been asking for a breakup uh the likes of biafra agitators so they do a republic even some part of niger delta ajo youth at some point have been saying that if this continues they will definitely look into uh, breaking up and of course um the media bells also have mentioned the issue of breakup at some point uh, but right now um some some days back about a week or two uh, ganduje uh, the governor of um, kano state had said look his sacrosanct nigeria cannot be divided that nigeria is an indivisible entity backed by law in our constitution a lot of people have contradicted his statement and of course mazen amkana said if you know there can be exit of other countries where even the uh, almighty the very powerful uh, england the uk can actually think of coming out of European, a European, uh, then the, the, why, why can't Nigeria, you know, other tribes, other states, or nations in the nation Nigeria exit? But right now, the presidency have decided to add voice once and for all to this matter, and this is quite strong. But before we quickly go into the news, like and subscribe to our channel if you have not done so already by clicking on the rest subscribe button beside it, you see a bell notification icon. Please go ahead. Click on it to get notified as soon as you update our channel on YouTube. Well, the special media, the senior special assistant to the president on media and publicity, Gaba Shehu, has said that Nigeria will continue to exist, exist as one indivisible country despite its present challenges. Shehu made the assertion at the Guararafa Reporters Lecture and Award Ceremony, which was held on Thursday in Abuja, sharing opinions on the issue of whether Nigeria should it, should disintegrate or continue to remain one as one nation, the presidential spokesperson said that nobody should go anywhere and that Nigeria will not break. Shehu commended Guararafa reporters on the positive impact they are making in society, advised us on the controversy of whether there should be Nigeria or not, my view is that nobody should go anywhere. We will continue to be here. Former Minister of Aviation Chief Femi Fani Kaede, in his remark, preached peace, saying that war is not the best way forward for the country. He advised that no matter what the differences have been in the past, peace is the only way Nigeria can move forward. He further took a strong stand against disintegration, saying those that are calling for it should desist. Mm. The keynote speakers of the occasion, the governor, Yahaya Bello of Kogi State, represented by the secretary to the state government, Kogi State, that's Dr. Mrs. Fola Shadi Ayoadi, spoke on what he titled One Nigeria, a critical work saying that to keep Nigeria one demands critical work by people in leadership positions. He charged leaders to do more in area of infrastructure and building human capacity aimed at building a great future for the country. Bello urged leaders to have a vision for the country and to endeavor to prepare the next generation of citizens and leaders who will have even stronger desires to safeguard national interests. He further said that one Nigeria should guarantee security and peace of all citizens and that it should be built on equity, which will allow everyone to thrive on their own. While acknowledging that there is no easy road to freedom, Bailey said that unity will guarantee success as no one acting alone can achieve success and called on all Nigerians, therefore, to therefore act together as a united people for national reconciliation, for nation building, and for the birth of a new Nigeria. Awards were also presented to dignitaries. Okay. And the Minister of the Year Award... Uh, Senator Boucher, Senator of the Year, Chief Femi Fanikai, the Distinguished Nigeria of the Year. And they were just giving awards to others. All about them. Mm -hmm. Nigerians, of course, have taken to the social media to respond to this. Everybody's suing for peace. I, for one, I'm also suing for peace. <laughs> peace is sweet, though. If you have ever lost it, you will understand. But the truth is, you know, the level we are in, this security is huge. 
The marginalization of a lot of tribes is huge. And the outcry of Nigerians over basic communities is huge. There's poverty in the land. Insecurity is biting on Nigerians every day. There are no jobs. All right. And um, the cost of living is out of this world in Nigeria. Cost of food stuff, honestly, food stuff is as, is as rare and special as gold is or as mineral resource is you know cost of living is you can't even negotiate it and uh, we've heard that they're looking into you know re removing subsidy for fuel which means the price of fuel skyrocket price of gas is something else electricity again they're looking at um, removing the subsidy as well you just see that if you want to go through all this it looks as if the future is, is bleak the fact also the fact that nigeria has handsomely borrowed into the future to the point that the next generations on board are going to probably go into heavy debt to poverty at some point one of these prominent i know one of the former ministers of legal state well i can't remember his name has said that it prob probably is envisaged he's predicting that in the next 50 years official nigerian's language is going to be china or chinese simply because we have over borrowed from china such that even if if you had to start repaying uh after the memorandum and um, moratorium that has been given to nigeria and uh, the monies we already have is not even enough to take care of the, the population populace how much more now to not start doing loan repayment on the various types of loan nigerians have taken and of course now start looking at also paying the, the salaries basic amenities is going to be huge how many investment do we have that is even generating this com income there are there but how many audit firms are auditing checkmating the level of fraud and you know corruption going on in those firms so that nigerians can get their man m money worth and re revenues as at when due now all this you know culminating into war with marginal with marginalization insecurity you now find out you now see the reasons why a lot of tribes a lot of nations within nigeria want their own nation because people after looking through the news looking through all these analysis and indices i should tell them to stay back who's going to pay all those bills who's going to pay all those all those debts they've collected in whose name and some of this debt they've collected they say they're buying rails and all that you begin to wonder how viable how uh, profitable is this real to Nigerian economy? They keep saying yes, you need real. We are not we are not finished securing even the lands. You are not looking at real and all that. All this all is blowing the minds of a lot of economics, a lot of and uh, Nigerians who are agitating. Now you're saying we're going nowhere. Are there modalities to bring peace, to bring unity? Uh, you know, everybody's just thinking of me, myself, and I. No one is thinking about the neighbor. No one is thinking about the peace and in his, and the security of the next guy. And now that's where we have a problem as a country. Until we begin to see ourselves and begin to truly treat ourselves as one. You see, if you go to any place, now the first thing they want to know is what tribe are you from? The level of tribal bigotry in Nigeria is out of this world. Let's put in that conversation. In some quarters, though, in some quarters, let's.